Thank you very much, and welcome. And thank you for coming out on a Friday night. I know that uh, there's so many wonderful things you could be doing, so I'm, I'm humbled and I, I appreciate you being here. Brian, Neal, and friends, if you're not already my friend, you are now. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for coming. This is, this is going to be a very unusual concert, perhaps different than you've ever experienced. We have all sorts of surprises and, and elements, and I'll, I'll take you through it step by step. Uh, the first portion of the concert will be announced from the stage, and then we'll be altering the, the, the movements of the concert around a little bit because of staging. So that first piece that I just played for you, you may have recognized from uh, Masterpiece Theater, when I, was, uh, I toured the country with a group called the Dallas Brass for 11 years, um, I was always asked to play that about the middle of the concert. And Michael Levine, who was the leader of the group, he would, he would, uh, we always did this, this fun uh, thing where he said, you know, that piece really sounds like, it reminds me of weddings. And I would come up to him, and he was talking about weddings, and I'd say, you know, Mike, could you let the audience know that, that I still do play weddings? And so he would, he would say, Brian would like to let me to let you know that he still is available for weddings. And the audience would laugh. And then I'd say, Mike, let them know that I have some, some cards that I can pass out after the concert. He would like you to know that he has some cards that he can pass out after the concert. And then I would jump down from the stage and I would start passing out my wedding cards to the audience. And they all went wild. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to be inviting out in just a few minutes uh, my, my uh, very special guest. I'll introduce her in a moment. Uh, well, I should introduce, I'll just let you know now. It's my wife. And, she, and we perform together now and then. And so we haven't performed together in years, though, except for just recently. We were in Sitka, Alaska. And uh, the day we got there, we were invited to a performance of The Wizard of Oz by kids from six years old to uh, uh, in college. It's a small community, like 6,000 people. And I was so taken by the performance of Wizard of Oz by this community that uh, I uh, went ahead and learned the, the main theme. And I'd like to play that for you now. such a wonderful melody. This is uh, 
a trumpet that I'm playing, even though it might not look like a trumpet to many of you. It's a, a small trumpet called the G trumpet, and the other one was even smaller, which is a, a B flat. They're, they're in the piccolo trumpet family, and uh, um, it's one of my favorite trumpets to play because it has this sort of singing quality about it, or it, I'm able to bring this singing quality to it. All right, so without further ado, please welcome to the stage the better half of the relationship, Karen Neal. <laughs> Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Brian. <laughs> that was a very nice introduction. <laughs> so she's going to be playing the auto harp. And we recently did a performance with a friend of ours uh, of Shakespeare songs. And um, this first one's in the key of F, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> we did, a, we did a, 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 a series of Shakespeare uh, songs that went along with, with Shakespeare monologues. And the person who was the actor who we did this with, he couldn't be here tonight. I asked him if he could make it, and he was not able to. Are you out there, Peter? No, I, I didn't think so. <laughs> He's gonna, he said he was going to try to, but he didn't make it. But, you know, I was just thinking backstage, Brian, that we played this song, Sing We Enchant It. This is a very old song. It's an English air written by Thomas Morley. And we picked it out when... I was expecting our first child, Jeremy. And it's Jeremy out in the audience right now. Yay! All right. <laughs> Jeremy, can you stand up? Where is he? <laughs> so imagine him in her tummy. No, just kidding. <laughs> well, we did a Renaissance fair at Vizcaya. Has anyone ever been to the Renaissance fairs there? They're amazing, like human chess and all these things. And I was so ready to have this baby at any moment that people thought it was a costume. <laughs> but we sang Sing We and Chant It. So, Jeremy, we're going to dedicate this one to you. <laughs> you ready? Mm -hmm. Oh, this is not the key of F. This okay. is the key of E flat. While you grab it, I'm going to start, or you got it? It's a, right. <laughs> it's a big build. Take two. <laughs> So what should we play next? Let's play It Was a Lover and His Lass with a hey and a ho and a hey nani no. And this is a special song because this, they believe, may have been written by William Shakespeare. It's one of the few songs that appears written out in his plays. 
And it's really cool to study the music from the Shakespeare plays because once you start being coming aware of all the song references that are in the plays, it just deepens your appreciation and you kind of know a little bit more what's going on. It's like if you went to a play now and one of the actors said, hey Jude, you would think in your mind, hey Jude. <laughs> and then you go on, don't make it bad. Oh, come on you guys, it's the Beatles. Song and make it better. <laughs> Remember to let her into your heart. Then you can start to make it better. Better, better. <laughs> so going on so it was a lover in his last everyone knew these songs everyone had a good time with them and uh, I think Shakespeare plays in the day were maybe more of an atmosphere like this concert where the audience was alive and engaged and having fun with the actors on the stage so thank you here we go to the hey ding a ding a ding maybe you can sing along maybe you know it by now <laughs> you ready <laughs> the carol they began that hour with a hey and a ho and a hey nonny no with a hey nonny nonny no how not a life was but a flower in spring a time in spring time in spring a time, the only pretty ring time when birds do sing. Hey, ding a ding a ding, hey, ding a ding a ding, hey, ding a ding a ding, sweet lovers love the spring. And they do. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. What's next? Flow My Tears by John Dowland. John Dowland, I'm reading the years here, 1563 to 1626. So he was on the tail end of Queen Elizabeth and the beginnings of King James. Well, you know, we have a lot of students out there who actually know these. Oh, really? Yeah. In fact, they probably... I have just had a test on it, or oh, they're about really? to oh, really? on Tuesday of next week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> John Dowland. Does anyone know what he was known for? The lute? Yes. Lute songs. I heard that. That was good. <laughs> yes. But John Dowland was known for writing a particular kind of lute song. 
and it had to do with an emotion. We're going to be here till 10 if I keep going. Anyway, he was known for sad songs. So he was Mr. Depressing. Mr. Depressing. And this one takes the cake, I think. For yeah, depressing. this one's yeah. really depressing. <laughs> Not to bring it down or but anything. But it's so beautiful. Yeah. Flow My Tears. He, he really knew how to make um, depression just so delicious. <laughs> <laughs> like Radiohead. Yes, totally. <laughs> Flow my tears fall from your springs, exiled forever let me mourn. When night's black bird her sad infamy sings, then let me So before we do this last one that we were going to do, Portimiro, okay. I we were we kind of threw together a piece at the last minute, and I was not cutting my part, but I would still love to have Karen sing it by herself if you don't mind. Okay. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, we put it together because we were doing all these folk songs, and we we're like, you know, there are modern day popular songs that fit this instrument and fit the style. And one of our most beloved popular music artists passed away this year. And I was up in Tampa at the Florida Music Educators Conference. I think some of you guys were there in Tampa. And he had just passed, and they were playing his music on the radio. And this song came on, and I had the auto harp, and I just learned it then. So to David Bowie, this is The Man Who Sold the World. I'm missing Brian's trumpet, but that's okay. <laughs> we passed upon the stairs. We spoke of was and when. Although I wasn't there. He said I was his friend. Which came as a surprise I spoke into his eyes I thought you died of 
long, a long, long time ago. Oh no, not me. I never lost control. Your face to face with the man who sold the world. You know the part that I'm missing. <laughs> I laughed and shook his hand and made my way back home. I searched for form and land. For years and years I roamed. I gazed the gazely stare at all the millions here. We must have died alone. A long, long time ago. Who knows? Not me. We never lost control. Your face to face with the man who sold the world. Who knows? Not me, we never lost control. Your face to face with the man who sold the world. And next time you're going to hear Brian play that with the trumpet. <laughs> <laughs> Give them to something to come back for. Yeah. <laughs> so the last piece that Karen and I are going to do together for you is a piece by Claudio Monteverdi, another name that will be on the test. <laughs> and this is his, from his last opera, uh, El Coronazione di Popea. Correct. And it's the final aria, actually it's a duet, from that last opera. It's called Pur Timiro.
istri Non 
concert, which is Gabriel's oboe and the program, we're actually going to do just after the, the next piece, uh, Edvard Grieg's Funeral March. So that's the program change that I want you to be aware of. And then we'll have the third portion of the concert, which is uh, I'll invite out a colleague of mine who we've worked together for years, and we've re recorded some, a CD together. We're working on our second CD. And uh, <clears throat> we're going to present to you some, uh, some old material and some new that we've been working on lately. Uh, and you'll meet him in just a bit.
So here we are for the last uh, few pieces of the show. We're going to bring out a, a very close friend and colleague of mine, Thomas Schuster. Please welcome Tom Schuster. <laughs> And so we uh, are, as I mentioned, we're working on a, a, our second CD. And we're going to start with um, it, it, the piece that's listed in your program, the Bo Bokharian Dervish. And this is a very interesting piece that uh, these pieces were brought back from a man named, by, by a man named Gurdjieff from the Middle East. He went and visited uh, monasteries uh, in inaccessible places. And he heard the music at the monasteries, and he brought them back. And in collaboration with a, a Russian composer, De Hartmann, they put together these pieces. And so uh, it's normally done, we, we normally do these with organ, but we're, uh, for, for this evening's performance, we'll be doing it with piano.
I want to thank you all so much for coming out to the concert tonight. We have one more piece for you. This is a, a piece that uh, Tom and I wrote a, a few years ago. Uh, you know, when you, when you compose music, everyone has their own, own way of doing it. For me, I like to, to be early in the morning with a cup of coffee, just sitting outside in nature and uh, being open to, to inspiration. So I came with this melodies, and then Tom and I uh, worked the piece together. And uh, this is uh, one of the pieces that we're going to put on our, our next CD. So I hope you enjoy it. Thank you so much for coming out. It was such a pleasure to, to play for you. And I hope to see many of you at uh, the concert next Wednesday. So this is called uh, Duo Concertant Number 3. <laughs> 